so. What was it like combining all of Harris's books into one series? <laughs> <laughs> I know, there's a lot in that book. Yeah. There's a lot in all of those books. Like, I mean, she populates a huge, complicated world yeah. of characters. Mm -hmm. I think that um, it was interesting because in the book there was a real slow reveal. Right. So you don't learn Joe's an angel till I think book two. But I think for me and for our producers, there was just because we know he's an angel, we don't know how he got there, what he's doing there, or what his agenda is, or who he is. None of that tells me anything about the man. And so for us, it was just like a way to wet the audience, like to give the audience an investment in this town, but it still doesn't begin or end their stories. So we can sort of unpack that as the season goes on. How much concept? I'm sorry. No. Um, how much of the source material are you using versus you guys are kind of creating your own to make it a little bit different? Um, there's a lot we're using. I mean, there's a lot we're using. And like I said, the books are at a very slow pace, so we use a lot early. Um, we follow the story of Aubrey's murder, um, and we also follow book three in the first season. So I think we're using a lot of the touch points, and I tried to keep the heart of the characters, but add more story and more plot and more incidents and more act-outs. So, um, so yeah, just um, I've been calling it Charlene's Books on Steroids. So it's sort of the book, but faster, stronger, bigger. So. What was the evolution of the show in the sense of somebody came up with the idea and said, hey, let's do this yes. show. So whose idea was that? Was that yours? Um, no, my someone sent this book to my agent, and they had known my credits. And I had called my agent. I was working on Agents of Shield, and I had had this like really awful fall where my mother and my mother-in-law and my dog all died within four weeks of each other. And so I was like, well, I need to like <laughs> I need to occupy my mind a little bit. And so I got the books, but my mother lived in this tiny town in the middle of nowhere, where every house was sort of a row house but it was surrounded by nothingness yeah. and my mother-in-law was a psychic who moved to a small town so I was like alright the fates are telling me to work this shit out so, that's, so it just I read the book so I was like oh man there are too many reasons why this is all of my favorite things I have a personal connection to a story I want to tell about this town and I love those characters and I wanted to be in Midnight and a lot of times with the series you have to want to be there for long periods of time all the time Seven days a week. And you are. <laughs> I am. You are. Right now. So, um, so yeah, that's the evolution of it. And it was just, it's been really, I won't say easy, but it's for television development, it's been pretty seamless. It's just been like every time I'm like, well, if, if all they do is buy the pilot, that's great. And I'm like, oh, they picked up the series. <laughs> no, it's, no, it's been delightful. Charlene is known for, like, well, known previously for True Blood mm -hmm. and the sexuality on HBO. Mm -hmm. How much did you have to tone it down for the NBC network where, when you were created, being creative with her work? Right. Well, well the, one of the great things about it is True Blood's metaphor was sex, desire, bodily fluids. I mean, that's what it traded on. It started with a bottle of blood. Like, it's like, that's where it lived. This book never lived in that. It lived in that it was about community and taking care of one another. It's about falling in love. And so I felt like it's a, just a different source material. So it wasn't really, I didn't have to tone anything down from the source material. It's just a very different world. Because, you know, in the books, the first indication of sex is leeching. And that's very TV, very network friendly, actually. So, um, yeah, so it actually wasn't hard, but mostly because the source material wasn't as sexual as the HBO, as um, True Blood. Was there an expectation, because from the author of True Blood, does that create almost a stigma for the show, in the sense of people are going to come in expecting that sort of dark... I get, I mean, it's hard for me because I read the book, so I'm like, but it's not about that! Right. So, um, look, it's not as if our characters don't love each other and there's not beautiful, hot people <laughs> under the camera. Um, but I'm hoping that you get invested in this town. Because to me, like, there's this sort of metaphor that's so necessary in this world right now of a group of people who are so different from each other, who didn't have a home anywhere else, who kind of found their tribe, and they're getting along despite all their differences, and there's an investment in taking care of your neighbor.
and I think that at the heart, she had this really gentle heart in this book, and I think that hopefully, eventually, people will stop craving the explicit sex that they're never gonna get because it's NBC, and um, you know, but it's not like we don't push the boundaries. I mean, Olivia and Lem, we did as much as we could without showing anything we couldn't show, and. Um, you know, so hopefully, because I fell in love with these characters, hopefully other people will too. Now, are you hoping the show will help fill the gap of supernatural shows on NBC now that Grimm is dying? I hope so. I mean, I I love supernatural shows, and when they go away, I get really sad. So I'm always looking for my next fix <laughs> for a show. So if someone's looking for a fix, you know, I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> when you ended season one, and obviously when I was on the set, that was the last episode uh -huh. yes. shooting. But are you guys, like, are you exploding with ideas for season two yes. forward? I mean, it's not one of those. I mean, no, I mean, I love these characters so much, and with the veil to hell sort of constantly percolating under the town, I don't necessarily see an end to story. Um, I also want to explore these characters. Ten didn't feel like enough for me. Um, so I have more story I want to tell with them. So yes, I am brimming a little bit. Okay. Although now I'm going to go on vacation, I'm not going to think about it. But you say you're not <laughs> going to think about it, but you're going to I know, that's the problem with it, isn't it? Yeah. My husband always says what being married to me is being married to Midnight and me right now. <laughs> so. who's, who's your favorite character so far? Ooh, One more time. I, I, there's something about Manfred and the idea of someone who has to see the thing that is the worst thing you've ever Like if you've ever seen a loved one dead, it's the worst thing you could see. And he sees dead people all the time, and yet he's funny and guarded and alone. And there's something about the lone guy who's just with his grand dead grandma finding a community that I feel like is like there's something about that story that makes me kind of misty. Like it's just I, there's something about it that I'm like oh I love him. So I want I'm rooting for Manfred. Which character did you have the most fun writing about? Because Manfred may have uh, demons, but there has to be a character that that's fun. That's really fun for you to just be like I love exploring this character more. Oh. Uh, well, I'll speak for two. Lem and Olivia crack me up completely. I think that their love story is peculiar and funny. I think Ariel and Peter are weird and funny. And then, and there's, we'll learn later on that if Lem is up in the daytime, he gets really cranky and then he's super hysterical to write for it. So I love, I mean, but the great thing about this book series is all those characters were interesting and they have different, so like with, with Joe, there's kind of a spirituality and a sentimentality. And with Lem, there's a kind of wisdom to him. And Fiji always means well. She's always trying, but she doesn't quite know how to handle her own emotions. So I find joy in all of them, but different versions of joy. So like if I'm in a bad mood, I might write one character instead of another <laughs> character. But if I'm in a hopeful mood, I'll write Fiji. <laughs> now, why have the show on NBC and not on another premium channel like HBO or Stars or one of those premium channels? Um, well, there's the business aspect that uh, the producer had to deal with NBC. Okay. But also, um, look, they were looking for something soapy and interesting and genre to fill up, to fill the grim slot. And so I think that, you know, they were really game. And I have to say, they've been insanely supportive. And there have been many stories where I'm like, Oh my god, are they gonna let us do this? And they've let us, there's not a story we've been shut down from telling. So they're game if we are game. And so we've just been pushing the boundaries and it's been fun. They were game for Hannibal, they're game for Hannibal. That's how I feel. Exactly, exactly. If you do a mushroom farm with a dead girl in it, there you go. I'm like, what? You know? <laughs> the show has been praised for having a person for a uh, showrunner and also the cast is so diverse. Um, how important was it for you to have that kind of aspect of diversity on the series? I mean, for me, it's really a, like, I mean, I'm biracial. My life is diverse. It reflects my world. It doesn't feel like an issue. It feels like a way of living. I mean, we did, op except for a few characters, we, we opened up the casting. We're like, come in. We auditioned people of every race, size, gender, and, um, and these were the 
characters who felt the most like the character that, you know, Charlene and I wrote. And so I feel like um, it was really important to us. It's also important because part of the metaphor of the show is a group of people who are extraordinarily different, who come from different backgrounds, who are able to make a community work. So to that end, difference was necessary and important um, just to even visually sell the metaphor of it. So, but in terms of the backstory, how much backstory do you get in the series of the characters? Every episode we unpack one of a secret or a history or a backstory for every character. So episode two is the Rev. Okay. Episode three we learn really how Lem became a vampire. So like every episode you'll get another st person's backstory. I would hate love it. That gives you the opportunity to go back in time. And we right? do. And, and we do that on a couple of characters, so it's yeah. fun. It's really fun. Even uh, the angel has been around for millennia. We go back in time for a little bit. Cool. So. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you. Real Thank pleasure. You. Thank you. Thank you.